Good evening, church. I greet and welcome you all in the blessed name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this Lenten meditation. As we are in the Holy Week, let us welcome God amidst of us. Let us prepare our hearts to worship Him in truth and spirit. Let us spend a few moments of silence asking God to take control of us. Let us spend a few moments of silence. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. Come, let us worship God together. Come, bless the Servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord and bless the Lord. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this evening. Thank you for giving us this wonderful privilege of gathering together in this manner in the season of Lent, especially during this holy week, to worship, to adore, and to extol your name on high. King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you. As even few of us have gathered here to worship and adore, we pray that you fill us with thy spirit and enable each one of us to worship you in truth and in spirit and to love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, souls, and strength, O Lord. As you have promised where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there in their midst. Heavenly Father, help us to experience your presence throughout this worship service as we sing praises to your name, as we confess our sins, as we hear the message from your dear servant. And then through all this component of worship service, may your name be glorified. O oh Lord, not by our strength or might, O oh Lord, but by your spirit, enable each one of us to worship you, Heavenly Father, unworthy, undeserving. Yet we come before your throne of grace and we ask you to cleanse us and make us holy so that we may worship you and worthily magnify your name. You be the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end of this service, and you receive all glory, honor, and praise, and bless us. For we ask this prayer in the precious and loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In praising God, shall we all stand and sing hymn number 435, hymn number 435, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Shall we all stand and sing to praise God? <coughs>
as we remain standing for a responsive reading, let us read from the hymnal, hymnal 571, hymnal 571 titled as A Clean Heart. Let us read responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy steadfast love. According to thy abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. And done that which is evil in thy sight. So that thou art justified in thy sentence. And blameless in thy judgment. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward being. Therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Hide thy face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners will return to thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of thy deliverance. O Lord, open thou thy lips, my lips. And my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou hast no, no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, thou wouldst not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. be seated. Dear God's people, what a joy it is for us to come together in this manner to worship and adore God's holy name. God is faithful in each one of our lives. He has given us this grace to worship and adore him. This evening as we have gathered here to spend some time in prayer, penitence and meditation, let us sing and worship him because God is worthy of all our praise and thanksgiving. As Psalmist says in Psalms 100, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. This evening as we are joyful and as we are celebrating God's goodness in each one of our lives, let us shout and sing praises to God's holy name. May I now invite the worship team to come forward and lead us in singing praises to God. Good evening, church. Let us spend a few minutes in praising our God, singing a few known choruses once again. Every evening, it's a privilege to come here and to remember Him, remember His goodness, and to sing praises unto Him. Let us do that by singing the first song, You are my all in all. You are the strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I streak. God, you are my all in all. Hallelujah. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. 
seeking you as a precious jewel lord to give up i'd be a fool you are my all in all jesus lamb of god worthy is your name jesus lamb of Taking my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I'll bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I am dry, you fill my cup You are my all in all let us all sing church jesus lamb of god worthy is your name jesus lamb of god this evening we come into your presence O oh master remembering that it is all about you O oh lord as we praise you as we worship you help us to praise you in a manner that pleases you O oh lord help us to remember that it is all about you jesus not about anything else not about us not about our skills our abilities or this place or the people O oh lord it's only about you O oh master hallelujah when the music fades all is stripped away and i simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart Coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you well, It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you, yes, Lord when it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. 
Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search, you search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song, more than a song. You're looking into my heart, into my heart. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song, more than a song. You're looking into my heart, into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, help us to remember that it's all about you, Master. Every word we say, every praise we give unto you, O Lord, help us to make it so that it is only for your glory, O Lord. This evening as we have gathered here and those who have gathered online to witness this evening, O Master, we pray that you speak to each and every one of us through your servant. Edify us and exhort us this evening, Lord. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you, dear worship team, for this meaningful time of singing praises to God. As we continue to remain in the same attitude of worship, praise, and thanksgiving, let us approach God's throne of grace with humility. God is a God one who inclines his ears to all our cries, especially during the season of Lent and Holy Week. Let us spend a few minutes in God's presence confessing all our sins the sins that we have committed through our thought, through our deeds, and through our attitudes. This evening as we have gathered, yes, let us ask God to forgive us because God's words promises us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This evening, as we prepare ourselves to repent of our sins, return to the Lord, renew our spirituality in God's presence, Dear God's people, let us sing this familiar chorus. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit in me. As we sing this chorus, the altar of the Lord is open for those of us who would like to come, kneel, and pray in His presence.
Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this evening. Thank you for this wonderful privilege that you have given to us to come to your throne of grace with the humility, broken spirit, contrite heart, O Master. You are the God one who accepts us as we are. You are the God one who is worthy of our praises and thanksgiving. You are the God who is filled with light and one who is filled with love. This evening we come before your throne of grace thanking for your abundant mercies that has sustained us thus far. Thank you for your son Jesus Christ who came to die upon the cross for our sins. Because of his death, O Lord, we are redeemed. We are in this position of crying out unto you as Abba Father. We come before your throne of grace just as we are while as sinners and offenders we have sinned against you and our fellow beings. We seek your forgiveness for the things that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. We confess all the individual and corporate sins in your presence, O Master. You are the God one who has promised us that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and you will forgive our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. This evening, O Lord, you know our status, you know where we stand in holiness and purity. Yes, O oh Lord, we have sinned and we are, we have fallen short of your glory. This evening we con confess our sins and you know that the sins that we have committed and we pray, have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. According to your steadfast love and according to your abundant mercies, blot out all our transgressions and wash us thoroughly from our iniquities. Cleanse us and make us your children. Yes, O oh Master, who can discern our errors. Forgive our hidden faults, O Master. Keep your servants also from willful sins. May they not rule over us. Help us to lead a life that is blameless, innocent of great transgressions. This evening, O Lord, we confess the sins that we have committed against your divine majesty. For the times that we have betrayed you, for the times that we have deceived you, for the times that we have not lived as your witness, O Master. God, who is full of compassion and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in your mercy, we come before your throne of grace for the forgiveness that is available. It is a prayer, O Master. You pour out your blood upon each one of us, cleanse us and make us your children. Cleanse us with soap so that we may become whiter than snow. You are the God one who searched us and you know us. If there is anything evil in us, O Master, remove it in your presence, O Master. Let the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shine in our dark areas of our lives. May we be enlightened through your word, O Master. Give us grace not to turn towards left or right, but only focus on you, O Master. You have called us to lead a life of holiness and purity. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes, O Master, as your children, help us to lead our lives in holiness and purity. This evening, O Lord, we worship and we adore you. We trust in you because you are our Savior. We come before your throne of grace with the sole purpose to worship and adore you and to give you thanks for all that you have bestowed upon us. Lord Jesus, we have sinned times without number. And we have been guilty of pride, unbelief, and neglect. We have failed to seek you daily in our lives. Our sins and our shortcomings, you know it, O Master. This evening we pray, remove all the shortcomings that we have. You redeem us from all sorts of evil habits, evil interests of our former sins, the things that we scheme against your people, O Master. This evening we pray that you purge us and you cleanse us and you make us your children. Purge us from selfishness, the fear of human beings, and the love of praise. In your mercy, O Master, deepen our sorrow for the wrong we have done and for the good that we have left undone. Help us to hate our sin. Give us the holy hatredness that is required for each one of us. Lord, we pray that you have mercy upon us, forgive us, restore us to the original image, O Master. You guide each path of ours, help us always to lead a life that is worthy of our calling. 
This evening, O oh Lord, as individuals and as families, we come before your throne of grace and we seek your blessings upon us. You be our God, our master, savior and shepherd. And Lord, you lead us, you be our provider, Jehovah Jireh, providing every need of your beloved children, be it physical, mental, spiritual and emotional need. You be Jehovah Rapha, healer God, heal us from all sorts of sickness that we have, O oh master. You know the things that we are going through, master, Lord, we especially remember those of us who are bedridden, who are terminally ill, who are in need of your healing touch at this moment. As we lift them to your throne of grace, we pray that you stretch forth your healing and upon them. Heal them completely, restore them to good health. We pray for all those who are lonely, depressed, those who are going through various financial crises and various trials and turmoils in their lives. God of peace, God of comfort, we pray that may your peace rule their hearts at this moment as we pray for them. You be their good shepherd, providing every need, O Master. Lead them in the green pastures, beside still waters. O Lord, you anoint them with your oil, O Master. You comfort them, O Master, with the comfort of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help your beloved people to rejoice in your strength. Help them to rejoice in the victory that you give, O Master. You are the God one who does wonders and miracles in our lives. Thus far, O oh Lord, you have been faithful. We praise you by falling at your feet, O oh Master. By kneeling and falling, we praise your holy name for all that you have done thus far. You be our rock, you be our redeemer. Especially we commit to our brothers and sisters who are going through sore trial in their lives. May you be near to them. Help them to find refuge in you. Keep them safe under your mighty wings so that they may rejoice and give you thanks and may they praise your name always. To you we surrender each one of us all these prayer petitions and our confessions and we ask this prayer in the precious and loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who taught us to pray while we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we also forgive those Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. May God grant what you have asked of him. <coughs> the scripture reading for this evening's meditation is taken from Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured, out, poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he, has, he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. Here ends the reading, gospel reading. May God add his blessings upon this red scripture portion. Today we have amidst of us our dear own Reverend Calvin Sushit Ambler, he has served our Sarjapura Road Methodist Church for a year. Then he has served 
in various churches like Kurumangala Methodist Church, Richmond Town Methodist Church, and Indranagar Methodist Church, and currently he is pastoring Jainagar Methodist Church. He is a graduate of Union Biblical Seminary. He has completed his um, BD from United Theological College. Today we have him. It is a joy to welcome him to the pulpit as he brings God's word. It is my prayer that God would anoint him afresh and may he bring the message that God has laid upon his heart for all of us. On behalf of all of us present, on behalf of us, all of us who are watching online, I warmly welcome our dear pastor, Reverend Calvin Sushit Ambler to the pulpit. Let's look to God in prayer. Lord our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for yet another season of Lent and the Holy Week in which we are journeying with your very presence and leading in each of the services. Even as we reflect on the word, be with us and guide us and renew our minds to be transformed in the way that you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, I would like to thank God Almighty for yet another opportunity that he has given to me to be part of you all this evening. And it has not been possible without also the leading and my gratitude to the pastor and Alfred and also to the members of the pastorate committee and uh, also for all of you and many of faces that are here which are familiar as uh, when I was uh, worshipping and also this is an important church to me especially being the first church even as I stepped into the Methodist church as a pastor so this will always be there historically and as well as spiritually I'd like to place my gratitude to God for bringing me here this evening yet again coming into the topic the topic that has been given to me for bringing sharing God's word it is title has Jesus said you will not always have me Jesus said you will not always have me for which the reading that we just heard from the gospel according to St. John chapter 12 verses 1 to 11 it was coming very near the end of Jesus to come to Jerusalem for the Passover was an act of highest courage for the authorities had made him in effect an outlaw which if we have to see in John chapter 11 verse 57 John chapter 11 verse 57 I would like to read it for you it says now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should let them know so that they might arrest him that much it had turned out to be of this very Lord Jesus Christ so great were the crowds who came to the Passover that they could not all possibly obtain lodging within the city itself and Bethany was one of the places outside the city boundaries which the law laid down as a place for the overflow of the pilgrims to stay. So this was a very crucial event which was taking place. When we look at it, Jesus was coming down here when the Pharisees had already given orders to arrest Jesus by whosoever who might come across this Christ. But knowing all of it, we see that Jesus enters into this place. So when Jesus came to Bethany, they made him a meal. It must have been in the house of Martha, Mary and Lazarus. For there, for where else would Martha be serving but in her own house? Because there's always a question as if into somebody else's home that this event would have taken place. But it was that house in most likely possibility. It was then that Mary's heart ran over in love. She had a pound of very precious spikenard ointment. An ointment which was very important, which was very expensive. And we see that Jesus silenced him 
that is Judas, by saying that money could be given to the poor at any time, but a kindness done to him must be done now, for soon the chance would be gone forever. So when you're reflecting on the topic, that is Jesus said, you will not always have me. So what happens is, in the first place, there are few characters that which we might come across in the red passage. In the first place, we see that there is the character of Martha. Martha is very much present. She was serving at table. She loved Jesus. She was a practical woman. And the only way in which she could show her love was by the work of her hands. Martha always gave what she could. Many and many great men have always been blessed. In fact, in, at homes or in any of the homes most likely, if there is no food, then the point of the guest being invited or an uninvited guest comes in, what is it that which we all rush into? How many of you would say that, no, we will get into the spiritual aspect, we want to spend time in prayer? If you ask any of you, would you deny the fact? We, what would we attend for spiritual or the practical, the food? Any of you? What is important? It's easy. We have come to church, so spirituality is important, spiritual food is important. Would we do it? That my God shall supply all my needs. This is what is the reality Martha was doing, what best she could. Because each of us God has uniquely created for his said purpose. In each of the lives, God has a purpose. So here was this Martha who was attending there. It is just as possible to serve Jesus in the kitchen as on the public platform or in a career lived in the eyes of men. So we see in the society, we live in a society, so all these aspects do matter. And the second one we come across is Mary. We see that we see that unselfconscious love which comes out. Mary wiped Jesus' feet with the hair of her head. In Palestine, if you have to carefully introspect, no respectable woman would ever appear in public with her hair unbound. They wouldn't. On that day, a girl was married, her hair was bound up, and never again would she be seen in public with her long tresses flowing loose. That was a sign of an immoral woman. But Mary never even thought of that. So when people are in love, we see they do not mind of who is seeing them. That is how it is. Sometimes we think that love is blind. It's always a challenge when you look into understand literally to take it, it gets blinded by other things which happen. So we do not know what exactly might be happening. So here we see that happening. And then when we come into the verses 9 to 11, when we carefully see there, for the leaders of the Jews, things were getting into an impossible position. This was especially the case for the Sadducees, to which party they belonged, all the priests. For them, the position was doubly threatening. We are seeing here Mary, Martha, and I'm coming here to Judas, and then which we see here. What happens? The doubly threatening, the first thing if you have to see is that it was threatening them from the political point of view. The Sadducees were the wealthy aristocratic class, and they worked in close collaboration with the Roman government. Their aim was to ensure their own wealth and ease and comfort. So long as they allowed to retain the ruling places in the government, they were quite prepared to collaborate. So this was the situation in which they were in. The Romans allowed their subject kingdoms a large amount of freedom, broadly speaking, under a Roman governor. 
The second thing which we see here is that they regarded it as theologically intolerable. Unlike the Pharisees, the Sadducees did not believe, believe in the resurrection of the dead. And we see that Lazarus had troubled their conviction and their faith. So they had every reason to be worried about. The Sadducees were prepared to suppress the truth. And all these things were happening in that very context. And now when we come into the very text that which we have heard from John chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. We see that it is about falling in love with the Lord and exhibiting it to the world with courage even in the face of hopelessness and humiliation. We are seeing that Jesus is there who has taken up that courage to come into a place where he is very mindful of that his life is in danger. He is almost about to go through trials. And we are in the Holy Week. And that's why it is very important for us to introspect here. One night, a little girl knelt for her bedtime prayer. She was a good girl who did a lot of good deeds, helping her mother in her works, keeping the newspapers tidy for her father, sharing her chocolates with her younger brother. And so on she did. The mother went close to the child and suggested things to be thankful for. She was a very wonderful person. The mother also added, won't you ask the Lord to help you love him more? Won't you ask and thank God? The child lifted her large button-shaped innocent eyes with a puzzled look. What is it, dear, asked the mother. Did you tell me to ask him to help me love him more, Mama? Said the little girl innocently. Yes, my child, was the response with this child gave to mother. But how can I love him more, Mama? Replied the little girl, I am already just so crazy about him. A craziness in the love for this very Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The little girl had very early on in life grasped the meaning of falling in love with God. Why this is important is a question which we need to ask ourselves. Have I fallen in love with the Lord and remained faithful to the love life in the Lord? Have we fallen in love? Because we see what was Jesus' statement when Judas tried to bring forth a direction he tried to tell him something. And that's where we see that this question which comes before us. John chapter 12 verses 1 to 11 presents a wonderful expression of love towards Jesus and the subsequent acknowledgement of this gesture of love by the Lord of love. This entire event is happening. We have the gospel wherein Mary anoints the feet of the Lord. All of us are familiar with this event which happened way back 2,000 years ago. In John chapter 12, verse 3, John chapter 12, verse 3, we see that Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. The house was filled. But in our house, what, are, what is it filled when a guest comes in? What would be filled? When the guest comes in, what fragrance would we get? It's difficult. Thinking? We think about nice food. There are children out here. When the guest comes, it is good for the children. And also, we also have the parts in which of the meat, what exactly is the choice of each member. So the aroma which when the mother makes or even the father. Because we have the patriarchy, we have the matriarchy and whatsoever, whatever that world which we live in, we are concerned more of the aroma which comes in with 
the perfumes or the food aromas but food is so very powerful so here was this what was happening we have an ointment which was being put here the ointment represented her love for the lord and she gave herself completely to the lord just few minutes back which i just read about what was it for a woman to unveil her hair and it meant a lot and she was giving herself by putting that ointment through that of her hair the fragrance of the ointment filling the house was symbolic of the deep love that emanated from her heart to for the lord that much was her love do we have yes i do appreciate the fact that we might be few in number in it's not about this place in several other places there is always a challenge when we come to the spiritual matters we find few takers because we got to be practical and we see that the fragrance had filled in the love it got displayed she is an example for all christians to realize that loving jesus is not just an act of sentiment but ought to be publicly displayed even in the face of humiliation and criticism when we love the lord we are ready to go to any extent yes no maybe it's a point it's a very difficult question for one to answer she exhibited to the world that no one can deter or discourage a person who has fallen in love with the lord so much was the love that she had for this father judas is carried however tried to dissuade this gesture of love by presenting an alternative act of piety serving the poor we see this is very important to for us to see how he tries to distract at what is happening there but the beloved disciple john the evangelist would uncover the real motive of this statement of judas can one of you please read from john chapter 12 verse 6 any of you can please read from john chapter 12 verse 6 you may use the microphone for the benefit of the online and the offline as well this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it yes but but jesus said let her alone she has kept this for the day of my burial for the poor you have with you always but me you do not have always Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus' sake only but that they might also see Lazarus whom he had raised from the dead but the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus Yes so we see that here when we look at the passage we see judas represents all people who demonstrate the danger of materialism and duplicity that has been neatly covered up by the cloak of piety in the name of piety he characterizes all people whose focus have moved from following the lord to plotting against the master following the lord to plotting against the master we are living in such a world we do not not know who is the master if we do not serve the master we are always challenged this is the world that which we live in and we have challenges before us but this is what he did so we need to check and examine is my love for the lord losing its sheen or shine and getting corrupted with worldliness whom do we love more the world the lord why do we ask our children study 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 well i also know that i remember the bible olympic student the winner 
also he is here. But when we talk about the worldly learning, what is it? Why do we tell them? Steady heart, steady heart. Any reason? We do not, it's difficult. So that they grow well, they can sustain themselves, they are equipped to meet the challenges of the world. That is what in most likely situation, most reality which it lies. So rebuking Judas Iscariot who exposed his avacarious motives, Jesus would sternly tell, let her alone, let her keep it for the day of my burial. John chapter 12 verse 7. Now the question, all these things is coming to the topic, what's happening, that you shall never have me before. So Mary had seen that very love. She displayed it. The Lord acknowledged the tremendous and daring love of the woman for him. He accepted the loving actions of Mary and gave a big message to the people around. He is the one worthy of receiving the highest and deepest love. Why was this being done? Jesus was well aware of what was to come. Jesus was well aware of his death. But it was very unfortunate that the disciples who were with him had missed the point. And amidst the disciples, we see the presence of this very Judas. A question is, he accepted the loving actions of Mary and gave a big message to the people around. And we see that he is the one deserving the sweetest and the most priceless affections of our hearts. He is the one meritorious of every expression of endearment and fondness. Where have we placed Christ? Because we are living in a world of competition. We have to be smart. At the same time, we have to work hard in our smartness. Where is our faith? Where is our faith? We are challenged. We are running through the few days that which we are entering almost into the Good Friday. And Monday, Thursday, which is very important. In such a scenario, this whole act of the 40 days and 40 nights is not something very small, but something which is very important for each of us to introspect. We are almost coming to a fag end. We are coming almost at the end times. So what is my level of love for the Lord? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. Christ knew the love Mary had towards him. But where is our love towards Christ? Am I courageous to express my love for him in actions that trespass humiliations or shame or guilt? It's not easy for us to be courageous when we stand for integrity. Any of you go through challenges? Any of you find it very difficult when we work in places? Can we be honest? Can we be honest at workplaces? Can we be? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, it's, it comes in thinking possible. It is possible. It is here, related to there. This is where we get shaken. We have tribulations, a many. And Jesus did not have something lesser. He had much more. And the challenges which we get through, go through is much more. So am I bold to show that I truly love him by living a life in accordance with the virtues of the gospel? When we believe in the gospel, but to live out the gospel, we come across challenges. It's very easy to distribute tracts. It's easy to distribute scripture. 
but to tell what is in it in what situations that it will come handy and to live it out is something which is very difficult only the one who has conviction within himself or herself is possible this holy week is a special time when we dwell in the passion death and resurrection of the Lord we see prophet Isaiah reminds us in the suffering we see if any of you can please read Isaiah chapter 42 verses 5 to 7 please Isaiah chapter 40, 42 verses 5 to 7 5 6 and 7 Thus says the Lord, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, the spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. Thank you. This Isaiah is something which is very reflection in the New Testament when we see it is very important how the suffering servant, a lot of things which we go through. So this moment even as we have come into the Holy Week, which is the second day that is Holy Tuesday, we are reflecting a question for ourselves to ponder as to where have we placed Christ? Jesus at that point of time he asked a question Jesus said you will not always have me Jesus said you will not always have me but we say that Jesus standing here Jesus is with us God with us Emmanuel several things which we say but then when it comes to live out in real situations in real time we find it very hard that's why this question of Mary giving up herself, something which was expensive. It is always very difficult to, for us to part with it, what is very integral to each one of us. Are we ready to part with those baggages which we carry, that of sin and several things that which each of us know? the cutthroat competition, the corruption, nepotism. There are several, several things. But we are running the race of life. A race which we are called for. It is not while on the funeral service that we say, well done my faithful servant, we stated. But each of us know as to how faithful we are in the race that we constantly, we do we run or do we walk? A question we need to ask ourselves. Because Jesus, it was very important for us. So at this moment, even as we reflect on the passage that we have read, which we have read from the then times, each of them we see Mary, we had Martha, we had Lazarus. Lazarus is being resurrected brought about a lot of problems for Jesus, for Lazarus, because we do not know what happened next, whether Lazarus died again. Definitely he's not, he's gone. But the point here is, we are challenged. We have difficulties before us. We have tribulations. When we walk in the way of the Lord, there is only one beautiful song which comes to my mind, trust and obey. For there is no other way. We have good voices that which uh, SRMC is blessed with. And we get to sing the songs of praise. Makes a lot of difference. It's easy to sing. I'm not talking about the vocals being good. But to live out in the beautiful words that which we get to hear and sing. It becomes challenging when we walk in the way of the Lord. So this moment... Even when Jesus cries out to each one of us, I am 
not going to be there but are we having jesus because we know that jesus is standing at the door and knocking if anyone opens the door i will come and fellowship with them that is a call which god is christ is giving to each one of us so this moment let's once again even as we are closing in to that very good friday the cross may the cross speak to us of that victory which god had to do it we know that our heavenly father he could he just was silenced on good friday seeing his son struggle in pain for what for that very love that he had for all of us so what are we giving in return for what he has done what he is doing because he is the one who is going to intercede for us on that day of judgment so let us once again reflect on the words when we go back home sometimes it is important for us to read the scripture passage again and go into the background and see where do we stand as just as adam was asked the question when god in the garden of eden when god came to us called out adam adam where are you where are we is a question we need to ponder to ourselves where are we where is our love towards lord jesus christ may these words help us to reflect and also to equip and strengthen ourselves in the way of the cross for that hope of a resurrection which is before us shall we look to god in prayer lord our heavenly father we praise and thank you for the word that came to us this evening for the love that was shown by mary of giving up herself and you emptied yourself for master for our sake and died on the cross and even as we go back to our places reflecting on the word speak to us strengthen us and equip us for the greater challenges that is before us in the time to come for in your time you make all things beautiful in that spirit we place ourselves to your care and leading for your glory in jesus name we pray amen thank you for pastor bringing this beautiful sermon on taking the characters like mary martha and the jewish people how they demonstrated love towards jesus in the light of this passage where have we placed christ in our lives what is the level of love that we have towards the lord thank you for this thought thought provoking sermon on behalf of all of us present on behalf of all of us who are worshiping god online i once again thank reverend calvin sushit ambler for this wonderful message this evening it is my prayer that in the days to come god would use him to sh- share god's word to people who do not know about him in closing shall we all stand and sing hymn number 434 hymn number 434 go to dark get some money as we sing this hymn let us offer our offerings and worship our god hymn number 434 go to dark get some money
gifts your beloved people the source of all that we have and possess we thank you and we acknowledge that O Lord you sent your only begotten son Jesus Christ in and through him we have all these blessings be it spiritual or material blessings everything that we have comes from you and to you we give you this evening O master as an act of worship and as an act of obedience to your commandment to give this evening O Lord as we have given with the intention to honor you we pray that you bless us, bless this offering, consecrate it, multiply it, and use it for the extension and betterment of your kingdom. Bless the hands that have given towards your ministry generously, O Master, as your word has promised, open the floodgates of heaven and shower your blessings in your people's life. May your people lack nothing in their lives because we have Jehovah Jireh, one who provides every need. Along with these offerings, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice holy, acceptable and precious in thy sight. All the skills and talents and resources that we have, help us to use it for your glory and for the benefit of our fellow beings. We once again thank you for your word that has come to us strongly this evening. Yes, so master, the poor will be among us, but when you are there, help us to honor you through our lives. Help us to enjoy the salvation that you have given to each one of us. Yes, O Master, help us to reflect and see where we have positioned you in our lives, to see how much we love you in our lives. In the season of Lent, O Lord, thank you for continuously speaking to us, giving us grace to fast, pray, and meditate. O Lord, this evening, as we move out from this place, send us with your blessings. Help us to be your true disciples, living as witness in this world. As Lazarus lived, as Mary and Martha, they demonstrated their love to you. We once again give you thanks and praise for all that you have done thus far. We ask this prayer in the precious and loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's use the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us in the church now and forevermore. Amen. seated. I once again thank each one of you for being part of this service. Tomorrow we'll have our Holy Week meditation at 7 p.m. We have Reverend John Sikamani who will be bringing God's word to all of us. 
I request those of us who are available and those who would like to come to the church to come and be blessed.